Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? Welcome back to another Liberating Louisville episode. Today's video is going to be much more focused on taking care of some necessary grinds in order to make it easier to take on the rest of Louisville. Really, this is just taking care of the compound and knocking out some skills to get myself a better fighting chance. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, we need fuel. That's our biggest concern. We'll need to fuel up the vehicles and then grab some additional gas to keep for future use. And before we do that though, we still have zombies to wipe out. Since the previous day, it seems that a couple zombies had wandered over, so we'll just have to take care of them if we want to fuel up in peace. After spending the morning fighting, I was able to successfully hook up the generator and begin refueling my van. Now, obviously since the generator is turned on, it's going to attract some friends that we'll have to take care of as well. After fueling up, I was able to loot the gas station, leaving with a ton of food, over 30 water bottles and orange soda, and some empty gas cans. Oh, and a popsicle freezer. I still need to fuel my other two trucks and the empty gas cans, so I loaded up the black truck and set out again the following morning. I almost flipped the truck though, which was pretty sick, but other than that, it was basically the same process all over again. Drive over, fight the zombies. get gas, drive home. One thing I'm going to have to figure out here is the migrating zombies. It feels like every day I get another horde finding their way over to me. Anyway, after fueling up and making it back to base, I dealt with the zombies that followed me. Following the events of the morning, I wrapped up the carpentry level 3 book and headed downstairs to seal up one of the garage doors that had broke down a few days ago. That included cutting down several trees and hauling the logs back to base, completely exerted. Unfortunately, in the time that I was away pretending to be Paul Bunyan, a couple zombies had wandered inside the compound. Not having the stamina to fight, I chose to end the day and worry about them tomorrow. It was also around this time that the whole bloodstained clothes situation was starting to take a toll on me again. The two rain collectors that I was able to salvage were completely dry, so I'd either have to use my water coolers or wait for it to rain again. The next morning, I took out the remaining zombies and got to work refortifying the base. I finished building the walls in the garage and then barricaded all of the exterior facing windows before adding two doors at the entrance of the fire station. After all of that was taken care of, I switched focus to making more rain collectors. I needed more planks to get this done, so I headed out to cut down some more trees. Unfortunately, a couple zombies had broken through by the tennis courts, so I'll have to repair that as well. 
And with no stamina, I didn't want to risk fighting, so I dropped my log stacks on the ground outside and headed into base to the rest up before continuing. I made my way back to the helipad where I built out two more rain collectors. I have the planks to pull it off, I'll just need to figure out the logistics of it that don't end up with me falling to my death. The following morning, I destroyed one of the walls of the helipad and built a ramp over to the fire station. The only problem? I'm one story off. Or so I thought. There's a pretty cool trade-off though. Apparently building wooden floors can phase you through walls and ceilings, landing me in the garage. On my second attempt, I used a sledgehammer to destroy a window on the second floor and built a platform from there to the roof of the garage that I was able to walk on. Moving to the west side of the garage, I built out another platform that connected to my original roof. After that, I destroyed the stairs on both the helipad and the fire station, replacing the stairs with sheet rope so that I'm able to get to safety with ease. During the process of building up the walkway, I did level up my carpentry to level 6, meaning I'm finally able to build out gates for my compound. I got to work the next morning by building out my first gate on the west side of the compound. With that completed, I turned to killing more trees so that I could both rebuild some more broken walls, as well as add the final walls needed to fill in the space between the gate. After building the eastern gate, I noticed a massive mistake in my wall building techniques. The south wall and the east wall are off by one tile. It's nothing super important or drastic, I can just add one more wall going east and west, but still, it just looks ugly now. I still needed some more logs to finish up the walls, but my wooden axe finally broke that afternoon, forcing me to start using some of my fire axes for trees. By that evening, I was finally able to completely secure the compound. With construction officially completed, we can start to focus on skill grinding. Now we'll need some books for that, and with the public library currently on fire, there is some symbolism there, but I'll let you guys draw your own conclusion to that. We'll need to head back to the mall. The goal here isn't to fight any zombies, which is hilarious to say considering the series is centered around killing zombies. I mean, we certainly can, we're just depressed and anxious, which will impact our ability to do any damage. Anyway, back to the skill books. We're looking for first aid 1 and 4, tailoring 2, 3, and 5, and the farming books, the full set 1 through 5. Before starting though, I did go ahead and plant my cabbages inside the grounds of the compound, and by that afternoon was able to walk away with everything that I'd come here for. Not wanting to pull a massive horde of zombies back with me, I looped around to the south and then crouched through the gate before climbing the rope ladder back to base. Finally safe and secure, I headed over to the helipad where I washed all of my clothing before heading back to base and getting rid of my anxiety and depression through the power of reading Harry Potter for the 200th time. At this point, I've got tons of food and water, a safe route to my rain collectors, and nothing but time. So with that, I spent the next three days reading through Carpentry Level 4, Farming 1, First Aid 1, and Tailoring 2. No sleeping, no grass touching, just three straight days of knowledge. The skill books checked off the list for now, we can start the arduous process of grinding some skills that will be a necessity, starting with first aid. If you don't know, the fastest way to level first aid is by standing on glass barefoot. This is insanely fast, taking less than 60 seconds in real life to level from 2 to level 4 in first aid. I'm not worried about dirty bandages and infections either, since I'll be constantly giving myself fresh wounds each time. Anyway, it was around this time that I heard zombies pounding on my gate and when looking around only saw a couple, which I figured would be an easy break from reenacting a scene on a jigsaw. When I got down to the gate, I opened it to find something like 6 zombies instead of the 2 that I thought I'd be taking on. 
Luckily, Project Zomboid doesn't adjust injury speed reduction into aim walking, so with my agility skills where they are, I'm able to pace with the zombies as long as I'm aiming at them. Now back to our scheduled programming. Honestly, the longest portion of this grind was simply just reading the books. With Slow Reader, it takes most of the day to read through a single book, and that a lot of time only grows with each volume. For example, I started reading volume 5 at 4.10pm, and didn't finish it until 8.10am the next morning, 16 hours later. A couple of things to note with this method real quick. First one is that you can queue up events, which is why you see me constantly clicking the same two entries. I've been able to stack up to almost 10 times with each injury, so you can just queue up a bunch of these removals and then step away if you need to. Another point to touch on is that I've never gotten killed by removing glass. It almost seems that at a certain point, the glass shards just stop damaging you. Now, don't take this to heart though, I've never fully tested it, but in my experience, I have never died doing this method. After a couple days of doing this, I was finally able to max out my first aid skill, stitch up my feet, and take some antibiotics, and then go to sleep. By the following morning, my stitches were already ready to be removed, courtesy of level 10 first aid. So I traded in the suture needle for some bandages and could finally focus on my next skill, which I'll need a considerable amount of thread for. Normally, I'd just walk outside and shred all of the clothing on the corpses littering the streets, but given that it's been like a week since I've set foot out here, a lot of these corpses have despawned due to the settings I enacted in an attempt to keep my game from running at 5 FPS as the bodies pile up. Luckily for me, several hordes had wandered over, so I spam shouted to pull them in and got to work. By the end of one full day of ripping sheets, I walked away with 85 thread, which, after consolidating all of it, left me with 24 full counts of thread. I need like 10 times that amount if I want to fully max out tailoring, so the next day, I headed back out down the road and spammed Q to pull in as many wandering zombies as possible before spending the entire day physically dominating as many zombies as I could get my hands on. Whenever I became exerted, I'd hop the fence in the junkyard and hide out there while the zombies tried to work their way around to me, before heading back out to continue the fight.
By the end of the day, I was up to about 45 thread, which isn't nearly what I need to max out, but should be enough to at least get me through a couple levels. By this point, it was about 5am, so before heading up to bed, I went over and disassembled all of my electronic junk, or at least most of it, until I was able to hit electrical too, which I'll need to start hotwiring cars. With that being said, it was already well into the next day, so instead of sleeping, I spent 4 hours pretending to be a heroin addict looking for wherever I chose to set down my dirty needles at, before grinding out two tailoring levels to end the day. After waking up the following morning, I began the tailoring grind, which was basically the same setup as first aid. The books take anywhere from half a day to an entire day to read, so I'd just alternate between leveling tailoring and reading until eventually running out of thread at tailoring level 5. From there, I figured I'd probably just be something that'd be better leveled throughout the series since it was already halfway to level 10. The last skill I'm focused on now is mechanics, since having the ability to hotwire cars will be a lifesaver. For that, I need Mechanics Level 2, which I was able to achieve pretty easily off of 3 cars within the compound. Originally, I had planned to end the episode here, but when I got back to base and was working on getting rid of my negative Moodles, another Heli event spawned, and since there hasn't been all that much combat in this episode, it was worth showing some highlights of the Heli event at the end here. So, enjoy! I tried to big brain this event and moved into the neighborhood to the west of the compound since I knew it had some zombies nearby, but was safe enough that I could retreat if needed.
While I was shredding clothing at the end of the fight, I foolishly let my guard down and was ambushed by about four zombies that had traveled ahead of a wandering horde. This was hands down the luckiest moment of the entire playthrough, and maybe even my entire time playing Project Zomboid, as I was somehow able to avoid getting pulled down and was able to walk away from the entire situation with only scratches and lacerations. No bites. So far we're up to 8,794 kills after almost two months in Louisville. I'll need to relax for a couple days to let my injuries heal since my right arm is basically destroyed, but other than that, we should be ready to go for next time. I have a couple POIs marked on the map that should have some guns, weapons, and other things we can use to start making a dent in these hordes. And for anyone wondering, here's what my skills look like so far. Thank you again to all my YouTube members who allow me to make this kind of content for you all. I appreciate you all, and as always, thanks for stopping by.